All right, so for, for now, I'm going to finish up with this uh, easy little example. Um, we're going to go through the same steps as always. What we do is we try to uh, uh, do step one here. What does it smell like? And then we try to verify uh, finding out this limit. And hopefully we can s see that it smells like something easier to deal with. So that we can, after we declare them the same, we can declare one of them convergent or divergent. All right, talk is cheap. Let's see. What does it smell like? So, uh, so we're gonna go with. Shoot, I'm gonna go with white. I haven't done white yet. So, so the top. I think the top is clearly just a one. The bottom, you got n, the square root of n squared minus one. I'm thinking that the uh, minus one is not gonna affect it that much. When your n's are huge, who cares if you just subtract one, right? Uh, so this will be more or less like one over n times the square root of n squared which will be roughly 1 over n squared. So I'm thinking that this smells a lot like 1 over n squared. That's my hypothesis. It smells like 1 over n squared. Now we need to verify it. That would be the verification steps. So I go like this, 1 over n times the square root of n squared minus 1, all over 1 over n squared. And of course, I'm slapping the limit here as n goes towards infinity. Let's check it. This would be n squared all over n times the square root of n squared minus 1, of course it's not equal, the limit of that is equal to the limit of this. But I'm way too good to be writing limit all the time, so I just write little arrows. Oh, goodness. Okay, maybe I could divide everything by n squared, so I got 1, uh, 1 over n times the square root of n squared minus 1. Say, so what What happened there? Divided by n squared, divided by n squared, there. And then uh, maybe I could put this inside. How do I do that? I could do this 1 over n square square root, square root of n square minus 1. That way they both have a little square root and they're very happy together so they can join together under one square root. That would, of course would give you uh, 1 minus 1 over n square. And then of course I try the limit now. The limit as n goes towards infinity. This gives me 1 over the square root of 1 minus 1 over infinity. Of course this gives me 1 minus the square root of 1 minus 0. Clearly that's one. Ipikaye. That's too easy. That's almost an insult to us. All right. Um, what have we done? Uh, this shows that they behave the same. So you could put a little check mark there. But that's not all we have to do. We also have to check, remember, that one of them is positive. Clearly the one I was comparing it to was positive because all my ends are positive. If the square root are positive, one divided by positive is positive. Enough said positive. These two conditions allow you to say that the corresponding series behave the same. So let's clear all this stuff up and get to the to the punchline here. The punchline is that where is the punchline? Shoot, I forgot to write the punchline. I'm actually gonna have to write it with my hand. O M G. So this is approximately the punchline is that this one behaves approximately the same as summation of 1 over n squared. And this one converges uh, because for so many reasons. For example, the integral test or the recognizing it's a p-series. And therefore we can conclude that the original one converges by limit comparison test comparing it to 1 over n squared. Yippee-ki-yay. That's a wrap. Alright, um, I think that should get you started on the limit comparison test. Uh, what do you guys think? We did the main idea, we did a few nice examples. Uh, I think that will do it for this today. See you guys here next time. Peace. Go smell something.